This is FBG Jen and FBG Kristen. And I'm FBG Margo, host and producer. You're listening to the podcast that will help you keep a lid on the junk in the trunk and inspire you to live a happy and confident life. Each episode, we chat with motivational experts and celebs and share our own candid adventures in being healthy. If you're looking for a podcast that's equal parts hilarious and enlightening, well then welcome to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. Ready to calm your mind and nourish your body? We have found an amazing product to help you do just that. It's called Natural Recovery Greens, and we are obsessed with it. It's the total body wellness drink with superfoods, BCAAs, probiotics, and THC-free high-quality CBD all in one. Simply put, it's nutrition that you can feel. Learn more at naturalrecoverygreens.com and stay tuned for how you can save 10% and get a free shaker bottle on your first purchase of a 15-serving bag. Welcome back to the Fit Bottom Girls podcast. This is FBG Margo. And on the line today, we have FBG Jen. Hello. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Sorry, you broke up. Hello, hello. It was hilarious. <laughs> and FBG Kristen. Hi. It sounded like Hebdo <laughs> or something. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> today we have our, our special guest is Rob Dion of Open Sky Fitness, and he has his own podcast called Open Sky Fitness. And guys, you were guests on his show a few months ago, and I loved your episode. Can you tell our audience a little bit about Rob? So yeah, Rob is, first of all, he is a great podcast host, as are we, of course, but he is like really he's kind of inspiring in the way that he does some incredible research and he asks really, really thoughtful questions. And, you know, he, his business and his show is really about finding, you know, we talk about how if you aren't willing to make changes, you're not going to see changes. And he, he has made a lot of changes and he really challenges people to, to do the same. So I think, you know, that's kind of a, a really basic overview, but it's, you know, he does far more, he focuses on far more than just the the very, very traditional fitness aspect. He really gets into some of the, um, so some of the mental work that you have to do in order to, to make these changes and to make them stick. Yeah. He's really into learning about a person's psychology. He's, he's a yeah. big proponent of therapy and whatever kind of therapy you need. He's really into that. And he really likes to learn how people learn things. And then also there are people, there are enthusiastic people that can jump right in and they'll start a new, you know, workout or whatever and they'll stick with it and they never have a problem. But most of us need some accountability. And he's really good about finding ways to make people accountable. That's fun, but that's also kind of a break through for them. So it's not just fitness that you're changing. It's like your entire life is changing. And if I'm sounding super passionate as I'm saying that, it's because he's super passionate when he talks about it. He's a really great guest. And you kind of like when you're done, you kind of want to go over to his house with his wife and have like a glass of wine and like see if they can fix your life or something because she's really on the right? nutrition side and he's on the fitness side. And it's just it's they're really incredible. And when we were on his podcast, he basically gave me therapy. Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa! This this shit just got too real. <laughs> it was good. It, it's great, and the, he opens the show with his wife, and then he does the the interview. Usually, it's himself with the other people, and then he and his wife close the show. And if you guys like what we do, you'll love what they do, and you're gonna love this interview today. And by the way, if you like what we do, wouldn't you want some stickers? I certainly would. I would. Hell yeah! Yay stickers! Yay for stickers! So please feel free to email us podcast at fitbottomgirls dot com. We'll drop a couple of them in the mail for you. Be sure to subscribe to the show that way you'll never miss an episode, and follow us on all social media. It's either at Fit Bottom Girl or Fit Bottom Girls with the S at the end. You'll figure it out as you're typing it in there. But if you leave us a five-star review in iTunes, we will read it on the air and we could use some more five-star reviews. If y'all are up for that, that'd be great. So guys, I say we get right into our interview today with Rob Dion. Just a reminder that this podcast episode is sponsored by Natural Recovery Greens, which is designed to help calm your mind and nourish your body. Save 10% and get a free shaker bottle on your first purchase of a 15-serving bag 
with code FITBOTTOMED at naturalrecoverygreens.com. That's code F-I-T-B-O-T-T-O-M-E-D at naturalrecoverygreens.com. Rob Dion is a wellness and fitness coach based out of Los Angeles. He specializes in helping busy people and entrepreneurs get out from behind their desks and carve out time to create a better quality of life for themselves and their family. Rob, along with his wife, Devin, are the hosts of the Open Sky Fitness Podcast. Welcome to the show, Rob. Marco, thank you so much for having me. Kristen, thanks for having me. I'm really excited to chat with you, you guys today. So, Rob, I'm going to ask you the first question. I, okay. wanted, I wanted you to start with your fitness journey, which began soon after your honeymoon when you were at a crossroads in your life, meaning your health and career. So what finally got you motivated to work out consistently and how do you stay motivated? Well, uh, so just a little background on that. Yes, my wife and I, we got married back in 2008 and we went on our honeymoon to Maui and Oahu and we were doing, have you ever heard of the seven sacred pools? The uh, uh, people have heard, trust me, oh, people yeah. have heard of it. It's like, it's a super, super famous like hike, but the seven, sa- like the, the, it's called the road to Hana and on the road to Hana to the seven sacred pools, uh, that's just one of the stops. And we were at a waterfall and my wife, at the time we had the, it was a, um, it was one of those cameras that you buy that it's, it, it, well, you, you had to develop it. So she's snapping pictures of me and I'm standing at this waterfall and she's like, Hey Rob. And she snaps a picture and I didn't see it at first. And then she develops this picture and I didn't have time to suck in my gut. I didn't have time to kind of like get ready for this picture. And when we developed it, I, I had this realization of how much weight I've gained over the last 10 years because I was about 31 at the time. And, um, I was probably 30 pounds heavier than I was in college. And I just never really took a look at like an honest look at myself. And I just had this gut hanging out. I felt, I looked all flabby. I looked kind of tired and it was a real wake up call for me. I was, and I just, I just, once we developed that, I, I just said, I gotta, I gotta change some things. Now this, the sad thing is, is that at the time, I was just kind of getting dabbling in personal training. I moved to Los Angeles to become an actor. I was waiting tables, bartending, managing restaurants. I had my, my, you know, I was trying to make money any way that I possibly could. And as a trainer, I kind of felt like I didn't know how I knew how to help people, but I didn't know how to help myself. And so that was where the journey kind of started. And I had a client who asked me if he thought I, if he, if he should actually do a half marathon. And I said, you know what? I think that would be a really great idea. And I'm going to one up you on this. I'm going to join you for this half marathon. And so I did. And it was a way for me to kind of get the ball rolling. And I, from then, I just started enrolling all of my clients and doing all these races. I started doing half marathons, triathlons, 5Ks, 10Ks, uh, mud runs, Spartan races, everything that I could possibly sign up for, I signed up for for about three years in order to just keep myself motivated because I knew if I signed up for something and I paid for it, I was going to stay on track. Now that didn't help my nutrition at all, but it definitely helped me kind of get the ball rolling with my fitness. And that was kind of how I got started. It was, it was kind of a, one of these wake up call pictures that really do. I, I mean, when we look at ourselves, sometimes we have that wake up call. We look in the mirror. It's kind of that aha moment. But for me, it was this, it was this, this, ha, um, this honeymoon picture that just stuck in my head. And if you go to my website, I'm sure you've seen it. If you go to my website, uh, I, I post that picture on the website. It's, it's there for all to see. So that was my, that's basically my start, my journey. Yeah. So, I mean, you've been using, I know that you said you signed up for pretty much everything for about three Mm -hmm. years, but you're a really big fan of using these kind of shorter term goals to get, to get your competitive spirit really going Mm -hmm. to like motivate the workouts as you lead up to it. Um, so I'm really curious because you have done a really cool variety of things. Mm -hmm. Does it all come naturally to you? Because you've also done like fitness competitions and I I mean, it's a wide range. Like, is it all pretty natural? Are you just good at everything? Do you Uh, enjoy all of it equally? 
<laughs> I love it. You're just good at everything. Uh, you are, no, right? <laughs> it's no, no. Honestly, here, here's the thing. You know, some people from the outside looking in might think, "Oh, wow, Rob's he's very self motivated." And in fact, I had this client um, who recommended a book to me called "The Four Tendencies" by Gretchen Rubin. I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's a really powerful book. And basically, sure. it breaks people down into four different categories. And one of the categories are these people called upholders. And upholders are people who basically they make a promise to themselves and they can keep it. Right. An upholder is somebody who's like, you know what? I want to lose 50 pounds. And then literally they just go out and lose 50 pounds. It doesn't take much more than that. I'm not an upholder. I'm not the kind of person who sets a goal and can do it immediately. What I have to do, I'm somebody who is um, I have to basically set a goal. And then I have to put it out there and, and do something in order to keep myself accountable. So if I sign up for a race and I put money down, that is a way for me to keep myself accountable. If I sign my clients up for a race, I can't come in after my client, basically. Does that make sense? Like I have I am very competitive, mm, but at the same yeah. time, um, I, I I don't have the self-motivation to like that specifically signing up for that men's physique competition. I was working at a gym at the time where there was this old, older guy who was, and he's probably in his late sixties, early seventies. He was a competitive bodybuilder when he was younger. He still did them in the, um, I forget what the, you know, just like the, I can't remember what the, the category was, but he would do these, like these fitness competitions. And he said to me, he goes, you know, Rob, you've got the perfect physique to do a men's fitness competition. You should try it. And, I, and for years I said no to this guy. And then I was doing the I was doing all of these these um, these races and I had lost. I got down to about 165. That's where I was. And I was just hovering. And one of my clients said something to me that kind of was like, oh, I don't want that description of me. He's like, wow, you looked really skinny, really svelte in this picture of me riding my bike. And I was like, I don't want to look skinny. I want to look muscular. I don't you know. So for me, it was like. I needed a change. I thought, okay, I'm losing way too much muscle mass. Um, if, if people are seeing me as like kind of the skinny guy, that's not what I'm into. I didn't want that. So I wanted to kind of, I wanted to put on muscle mass. So I just, I signed up for a men's physique competition and told everybody I was doing it. And I posted it on my social media. I posted it on my Facebook. And if you scroll back to my Facebook posts for my personal page and even my business page, the Open Sky Fitness page, uh, you will see my first pictures. And I basically made everybody else hold me accountable. And so th this is this is a way for people who don't have self-motivation to create external motivation. And this is, you know, it's just basically I've become really good at sidestepping my own my own. Um, you know, personal laziness, if for lack of a better word. I, I am very, very lazy uh, as a person. But what I do is I get, I want something and then I have to figure out kind of uh, a detour around doing it, figuring out a way to do it so this way I actually get it done. Um, I can't just set a goal and do it. That's that's almost impossible for me. And I think that's and in, in terms of like Gretchen Rubin's, you know, four tendencies, uh, I'm there's about 40, 47 percent of people are like me. The majority of people. This is why people set New Year's resolutions. They can't accomplish it. This is why people, you know, they say I want to lose 10 pounds and it's impossible. It's because they, they haven't figured out ways in which to create external accountability that is functioning and functional for them. Uh, otherwise they just, they try to do it and it's just, they don't understand that that is not something they're good at, but then they have all of these friends that are upholders or these people that they know that are upholders in their life that are able to set a goal and achieve it. Uh, and they think they should be like that. There's lots of people like Gary V, right? If you're in the business world, uh, even now in fitness, he's like, he's huge for a bunch of fitness entrepreneurs. He's basically tells people to just go out and do stuff. And what he's failing to kind of recognize is that half the people out there are not capable of doing that. In fact, only about 10% of people are capable of setting a goal and going out and actually achieving it without external help. And then there's like a whole sub subsection of people called rebels who doesn't matter if they set a goal for themselves. It doesn't matter if anybody else puts pressure on them to do something. They won't do it. We all know those people in our lives who would like literally anytime anybody la lays pressure on them, they cannot do it. It's almost as if they, they, they rebel against all external um, pressures and internal pressures. They can't even set goals for themselves. Um, so there's, there's, it's, it's really an interesting book actually, but it helped me kind of define who I was. So 
kind of circling back in a long winded way of describing what, you know, the question you asked me is, no, I have a really hard time setting goals for myself. But what I've become really good at is figuring out how to give myself external accountability. And that's what I that's how I work with my clients, because literally 50 percent of the people that I meet have that same thing. So it's really easy once you once you can kind of see the patterns, it's really easy to identify what motivates people. And that's one thing that motivates me. So that's uh, so I don't know if, I, if that answers your question. It, it totally does. And it also it um, brings up another one for me is I'm wondering, yeah. can you offer a couple of examples outside of like races or fitness competitions? Because for some people, that's just not their bag. Yeah. Um, but what are some other types of, of goals that you can use to kind of get that external motivation started that doesn't necessarily require a race? That's a great. That's a great point because not everybody's trying to drop weight and not everybody's right. trying to become fit. Um, well, I, I would say like the, the two biggest things that people don't enjoy in their, that, that people kind of struggle with in life. Well, there's maybe there's two or three, but, um, but fitness is one. Most people are, are, you know, somewhat unsatisfied with the way that they look. Um, and then the, then financial, most people, especially couples, as we get older, uh, I'm in my forties now, uh, as we get older, we realize finances is such a stress on us. So a lot of people really do struggle with how to make more money, um, how to stay focused, how to be more, you know, for, um, uh, how to be, how to basically get more done, right? How could we, how could we get more done in a certain amount of time? Now, if you don't have the capability, like I was saying, like if you can't say, okay, I'm going to create a side hustle or I'm going to, you know, try to make some extra money here in my, you know, if I'm working a nine to five and I'm going to create a, like a external side, side hustle, how do I do that? Well, you can't just start making money online or you can't just start making, you know, money other in other ways. You basically, what you want to do is you want to find other people that have the same wants and goals, right? So maybe you put something out on your Facebook page, right? And this is, and what I'm talking about is just literally creating external accountability. You put it out there that what you're looking for, right? It's called almost like the secret, right? You put out there what you're looking for and the, and, and the universe will provide, right? So you, you post on Facebook that you're, you're like, Hey guys, I'm really interested in making more money on, you know, uh, doing a side hustle. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do. Does anybody else have the same exact thing that they're work that they're struggling with? And you'll get like five or six people that say, yeah, that's me. That's me. That's me. If anybody lives in your area, then what you do is you set up weekly meetings, accountability meetings. Literally every single time you get together, it be very structured. It's almost like a mastermind in itself. You'd be very structured and you say, oh, OK, the first 10 minutes, first five minutes of this, we're going to talk about what we did last week. And then we're going to talk about, you know, one specific person gets to be in the hot seat for the next half an hour, 40 minutes. And you talk about what are your goals? What do you want? Why do you want it? That's a really important question. And we can talk about that in depth, you know, because that's a really important thing as a coach is finding out why people really do want to achieve that thing, whether it be financial or weight loss or whatever, and you figure out why they want it. And then you break down, okay, what do you need to do in the next seven days in order to accomplish it? Right. You could do the five year, the 10 year, and then back it up from there. But what do you need to do this week to accomplish it? What would be like two steps forward for you this week? Great. Okay. And put that on the list. And then next week, those are going to be the first two things that we talk about when we start this meeting. And that's literally, you created now outside accountability. You are uh, holding, helping other people hold them accountable. And so we have this kind of, this kind of relationship now in our life that we usually don't have with other people. Nobody, none of our friends, none of our family want to say, Hey, you know, you didn't, you don't look like you lost a couple of pounds this week. What's going on with your, what's going on with your workouts? Or you don't, you didn't make any more money, money this week or nothing. Nobody asks you those questions. So you need no, to basically they don't assign. Say long if they do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you need to assign somebody that job in your life if you really do want it. Or, and this is the very simple thing, is or hire a coach, right? You guys do coaching. I do coaching. This is what this is why people hire coaches. I hire coaches to help me when I know that I'm going to need somebody with a little more expertise to help me get from A to B, right? Or A to A to Z basically, right. because it's a little more complicated, right? So that's, that's a way for people in any business or any aspect of their life to really, I mean, look, we, we joined, I just had a baby. She's four months old. We joined mommy and daddy groups because it's too, it's too complicated for my wife and I to figure out how to do this on our own. So we outsource 
the, you know, the, the, the thought process, where should we be? What's happening at this moment? And then there's an expert in the room. She answers questions and there's like, you know, 20 other people in the, in the room as well. And they're all bouncing out all the things that they're struggling with. And it's like, Oh my God, I connect to that person. Oh my God, I connect to that person. And so this is basically what it is. It's a weekly accountability meeting where we get to learn from each other and help each other. And that's, that's, I mean, it's every aspect of our life. We should all be doing that. We should all be seeking that out. And, and if you're not someone to just read a book and, and check out all these blogs and, and really learn on your own and, and apply it, then you need to, you need ex, you need external accountability. And, and that's one way to do it. Well, speaking about you and your wife, you spent years creating this really a unique coaching plan that focuses not only on physical activity, but also mental health. And I know we, we started touching on that, but can you dive a little deeper in what that means? Yeah, sure. I mean, so my wife and I, we both go to therapy. And so a lot of people, when they hear that, they roll their eyes. But I think there's, you know, you asked me, you sent me an email last week and you were like, so what are some of the topics you want to talk about? And I'm all over the map with topics. So it's, so because because my wife and I have been doing our podcast for five years, there's so much there's so many layers of being healthy if that's even if that's even what you want there's so many layers of being i think everything comes down to being happy i think honestly i think whether you want to lose weight whether you want to weight make more money whether you not you want to improve your relationships whatever it is in your life that you want to change it all comes down to the root that we all just want we all want to be happy really that's i think that's the root of all of it so if there's there's turmoil in your life and there's things that you're struggling with, you need to get to the root of it. So my wife, you know, about eight years ago, nine years ago, she started going to therapy and she was doing, uh, she was doing one day a week. And then the therapist that she was working with, she was a, a psychoanalyst is, is her therapist. That's her specialty. And so she said to Devin, she goes, would you be interested in doing psychoanalysis? And Devin's like, what is that? She goes, well, basically you would come four days a week and obviously it's not going to be as expensive as it would to do one day a week, but you come four days a week and we basically break down all the different areas of your life that you're struggling with. And we help you kind of reprogram. And that sounds really weird and kind of um, mechanical, but basically we have a very specific way in which we, in we interpret information, right? The only thing we have control of is the way in which we interpret information. That's, that's true. That's truly it. Like information comes our way. We interpret it and then spit it back out into the world, whether it be good, bad, um, you know, it upsets us, it makes us happy, whatever it is. It's our interpretation of what the situation is, right? So if, if you're going to always filter external information through this, I don't know if I can curse on your show, but this shit filter that you've created from a lifetime of negativity, maybe your parents were, you know, not great to you, maybe you had uh, maybe you were abused as a kid. Maybe you had, uh, you know, eating disorders as a kid. And everything has this, this kind of, um, uh, you know, this negative filter. And you're interpreting the world that way every time new information comes your way. Well, if you don't do the work, and I know that Jen did a lot of work on her own, and she got that through her nutritionist, and it really helped her redefine who she is as a person. Which is, I think, one of the reasons why I was really interested in 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 having you guys on the show, uh, on my show. But yeah. it's it's. If you do not do the work to change the way that you interpret, uh, you are never going to get to the true kind of heart of your own personal happiness, right? And it's like a happiness, a contentness with who you are, who you are, excuse me. And that is that is the true the true journey. I think we all are on as humans. So when you dive in, and for myself, I go to therapy. My my wife is now done with therapy. She doesn't go anymore. I go twice a week. I started like two or three years after my wife because um, I was stubborn. <laughs> I thought I was good. And, uh, and, and it changed our entire relationship, not just, in, in, you know, between the two of us, but it changed our relationship with our, with our friends. We had, I'm not going to get into too, too much detail because I, I want to be vague because it's, it's, these are like friends of ours, but like we had some friends that we had a falling out years ago and um, we just had a reconnection randomly had a reconnect connection, um, at a, at a dinner party. And this person started reaching out to us to hang out. And, and, and Devin and I were like, why is this person reaching out to us to hang out? That, that makes no sense. She was the one who didn't want anything to do with us. It was totally random. Oh, well, there were situ there were certain situations, but I'm not going to go into that cause I don't want to give any specifics anyway. So she, um, wanted to get back together and be friends again. 
And here's why I think therapy is so good because um, she called my wife, she called Devin and she was like, you know, um, I'd love to have you guys over for dinner, blah, blah, blah. And Devin, which would the normal person would either do one of two things. I think the, uh, they would either ignore the phone calls, right? Or make excuses and say, you know, uh, yeah, this is, this is, you know, this is, uh, we're busy, yada, yada, and drag it out until this person stopped asking or just ignore it all together, right? That's generally what most people do. But what Devin did, which I thought was, I was just like, wow, I'm really impressed with you, is she goes, we're very interested in hanging out. However, we need to have a strong conversation about what happened in the past, and we need to really come to terms with this. And and she's like, here's what happened. And she ironed out all the things that happened, and she's like, what is your opinion on this? And the other person who was who she's talking about had been through uh, therapy as well over the last couple of years and completely kind of ate crow and just said, yes, I, I totally agree. I was in a bad place. And 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 uh, and she just totally saw everything that was going on in her life that wasn't quite right. And it, it just helped everybody get to the root of what was the problem. And what we do in life, we just because we're just so protected, so guarded, we're so scared that we're going to that something bad is going to happen to us if we're just vulnerable. Um, if we do that, you know, it's just it keeps us locked in this place that we have zero growth. So now, I mean, and this is very, very new. So whether or not this relationship builds from here or doesn't really go anywhere, the reality of it is, is without that kind of self-awareness and internal work that, that they both have done this relationships can't grow. And let's be honest, whether it be, whether it be, I mean, happiness comes from relationships, right? Families, friends, whatever it is, it all really, we, the only things we have in life is basically our memories and our conver and our conversations. It's the only thing that we have really. So if you, if you try to basically keep yourself guarded from all of these people and never want to experience anything new or give people a second chance, you're just pigeonholing yourself into a life of kind of misery and, and, and sadness. So I, I just I think that any kind of internal work, self-awareness work, whether it be therapy, I don't know, for some people, it might be religion. It might be um, it might be going to group stuff um, that all of or maybe it's a coach or something like that. This this is it's so unbelievably important that uh, that I, I just I can I, I can talk literally for days about it. And uh, and I really do enjoy talking for days. I had a friend of mine call me last night. He's like, you're you you can you're one of those only, only guys that I know that can listen to me and 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 hear what I'm saying and and uh, and I can talk things through. And that's just I think that takes time, takes effort, takes work. And those are the ways to create relationships. And yeah, so I don't know. I, I feel like I got off a little bit on a tangent there, but I think that it really is. I think that that self and internal work is really, really important for every single person. And they should all be striving to do that. And it's so interesting. Like as you're talking about that, yeah. um, I've been through some similar situations and, you know, it, it's funny because you, when you see it from, you know, from the, from the other side, once it's over, it's like, well, of course, a little bit of, um, a, you know, maybe you feel a little anxiety or whatever going into that difficult conversation, Yeah. but it, you do it, you have it. And then it's over regardless of how it turns out, either it turns out well, or, you know, the other person's like, nope, can't do this. And, and then it's nice and firmly severed, but either way, like it's this short time of, of relative discomfort that could potentially lead to a you know, a rekindled wonderful relationship versus however much time spent agonizing or feeling uncomfortable um, over, you know, oh God, well, what does this mean? How do I keep putting them off? I'm so stressed. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when you're in a nice, healthy place, it's really easy to make that choice and to just be like, nope, you know what? I'm going, I'm going for it. Let's, let's work it through versus times when maybe you're not in such a, an emotionally or mentally healthy place. And then it, it, that can seem really insurmountable. So I'm, as you know, we talked about this before. I'm 100% with you. I actually, um, my only hard stop today is that I have a therapy appointment after this. That's how it worked out. Um, but yeah. <laughs> oh, not, I, did you say not because of you? <laughs> <laughs> That's Doc, hilarious. I'm to Rob today. Uh, can you get me in? 
<laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. Uh, I've sent so I many. I've sent you know it's funny. I've sent so many people to therapy. I'm not even kidding you. I have like friends and clients. I just I talk about because I talk about the things that I'm learning about myself and 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 what I see in other people. And I just and I say. All the time, you know, you should really consider talking to people because this is a habit. This is this is if you know the way to spot somebody who needs therapy is they do the same thing over and over and over again in their life. The same pattern keeps happening and they don't see it coming and yeah. and and they end up in the same relationships. They uh, they, they uh, I had a, I had a client one time who, oh, my God, she was she was doing so well. She she had lost all this weight. She had built so much confidence. She was she was crushing it. And her boss started to notice. And her boss was like, you're like killing it right now. Uh, you need to put yourself in for for this this job opening that's coming up in this in the in the company. That's that's that's, you know, coming up in like in like a month. And she's like, uh, really? It's like, yeah, it's your shoe in for this. It's like and it was a quarter more money. It was all this stuff. She was going to be basically the boss of all the people that she was working with already. And she got nervous. And I said, just do it. Just fill out the application. And she procrastinated, procrastinated, procrastinated until it was too late to put in the application. And it, and it didn't happen. And the oh. boss, after the new job was given to somebody else, the boss came to her and goes, what happened? She's like, oh, I just got really busy. I had all this stuff coming up. And that's that's the line. That's the excuse. That's the same exact crap that we just allow ourselves to believe, right? I'm busy. I have all this other stuff. If I get the job, then there's going to be all this other new responsibility that I'm going to have to take on. And then you start living in the future and the living in the future just creates all this anxiety because you don't know what is going to happen. So instead of just being present and saying, you know what, I'm just going to do this one thing and I'm going to let the cards fall where they fall. I'm going to let life unfold as it unfolds. And I'm just going to embrace every moment as it comes. She couldn't do that. She was she was just so scared of the possibility of of taking on something new or evolving into something else that she just sabotaged herself. And and I and and the conversation was like, okay, we need to get you into therapy. We need you because this is this is going to be the rest of your life. This is gonna be the rest of your life if you don't talk to somebody. I can't. I, I mean, I can talk to you about this, but it's going to take years. And if this is you listening to the show, and it's years and years and years of this. Uh, a lifetime of this. Um, I, it's not like a death sentence to go to therapy and change the change yourself, but it, understand that you have maybe 20, 30, 40 years of doing something in a specific way. It's not going to change by listening to this podcast. If you're noticing something and it's, and it's difficult um, and you're like, okay, I, I need to change that part of me and you're get, feeling inspired right now. The reality of it is, is you've got so many uh, you know, synaptic pathways to that are conditioning you to react in a specific way. It's not going to change unless you spend the time to really break down each individual thought process of why you are not doing what you need to do in order to improve your life, why you're not embracing happiness, why you're not embracing success, why you're not embracing health and wellness. It's why are you, why are you getting in your own way? And, and I mean, we all struggle with it, you, right? I mean, I, I might, yeah. I, we don't pretend as, even as podcast hosts, even as, as coaches and, and professionals in the business, we don't pretend like we've got it all figured out. The, the, I think the better the, the 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 better coaches out there, they just see it in themselves, so that therefore they can spot it in somebody else much much more quickly, right? Rather yeah. than the coaches who are perfect or these insta insta bodies out there that are amazing, that are 27 years old and haven't have never had to lose weight or never struggled through something. Those are the people that maybe you're attracted to because you want that life. But the reality of it is, their life is not as good as they're making it out to be. You know, and even if you got to have a conversation with those people, chances are uh, their journey is not even going to be si close to similar as yours. So you have to do that internal work and you have to really be OK with it being a process. Right. I have on my right behind my computer. I have a post that says uh, a piece of paper with Sharpie that says the process is the result. We have to be OK with the process of learning, getting better and embracing the moment to moment that is our that is our life, right? There's a saying like, if you live in the past, you're living in depression. If you live in the future, you're living in anxiety. If you live in the present, it's your only opportunity for happiness. It truly is. Yeah, no. And, and another problem that some people have, and I've had students and clients who have this issue and friends, it's not a problem I've had, but it's perfectionism. 
You know, they don't mm. move forward with something because unless yeah. they can do it, absolutely. Friends that want to start a podcast, like, what did we do? Oh. We just jumped right in. You know, I didn't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's so like, how can that sabotage your best efforts to be healthy? How do you break that habit too? Well, perfectionism is a great one because it's a, it's a, it's a good way to identify who you are as a person and whether or not that's the thing that's preventing you from, from success. There's, so there's two different types of people and perfectionists always look at high achievers and think, I want that. Right. But there's a difference between a high achiever and a perfectionist, uh, a perfectionist, like, let's say there's a specific goal. A perfectionist sets a, sets a goal for themselves. Well, a perfectionist will feel shoved towards that goal, right? I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to, I want to, I want to increase my income. I want to uh, get a promotion at, at work. I want to, you know, find a boyfriend, whatever it is, right? A perfectionist will feel pushed towards achieving that thing. Therefore, they feel like, oh, my God, I, I don't want to do this. Like it's almost getting shoved over the cliff, right? It's like you, you just feel like you're you're about to walk the plank. It's scary, right, to plunge into that what, that, that, that unknown. Now, a, but a high, a high achiever is different. A high achiever is like, I want to find the perfect guy or I want to lose 20 pounds or I want to do – I want to – I don't know. I want to learn how to rock climb, whatever, right? A high achiever will, will, will set a goal – to do something and every step of the way, this is why the process is the result is so important. Every step of the way, whether the high achiever succeeds or fails, either way they learn, right? That you don't, you, you, there, there is no, you either win or you you learn. There is no lose in a high achievers world. Mm -hmm. So the high achiever will every step of the way feel joy, feel happiness, feel excitement about the process. While a perfectionist will feel as if he's being pushed, pressured, uh, to succeed. And if he doesn't succeed at something, even though he might have gotten 75 or 90 percent of the way there, he'll only see the 10 percent that he didn't complete and be really pissed at himself for not having done that. It'll be there'll be no learning involved. It'll be complete judgment of of the fact that they didn't go the full 100 percent to the goal. And 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 for, you know, like you were talking about before with the podcasting, it's this is what prevents people from actually taking action because what they do is they play out in their mind where they have to go and, and what they have to do in order to have a successful podcast or whatever. And they play it out and then they realize that's a lot of work. Uh, if I don't do that right, it's going to fail. It's not going to work. And, uh, and I don't know what the future has to hold. So I'm going to procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate until, uh, until basically, you know, until the, the opportunity goes away or until I until I stop thinking about it. Right. And that's and unfortunately, that's what keeps us locked into the place that we are right now. It keeps us uh, unhappy. It keeps us thinking that we're not successful. And the reality of it is, just like you said, you guys, you guys, you know, you guys just passed 100 episodes or so, I think. Mm -hmm. And you have, uh, you know, you probably sucked in the beginning. <laughs> Um, <laughs> How and, dare and, you, and, sir? <laughs> and and I'm not saying that you're you guys suck now, but you're not going to be as good as you are going to be in another hundred episodes. Right. 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 You're going to get better as you go. And that's the reality of life. We get better. We learn. We just l allow ourselves to be students. There is I have another I have like all these little things that I have around my computer to remind myself of my own personal perfectionist problems. And one of the things I have is curiosity is the secret to success. Right. We we need to be curious about the things in which we want to get better at. If we just if we a perfectionist, unfortunately, says uh, I want to rock climb and then goes in, tries to rock climb, sucks at it and goes, oh, I, I'll never be able to do this. But. If you're curious about what it takes in order to be good, if you're curious about all the different aspects of, of rock climbing, then you are then you are in a different mindset than the person who is uh, set on only being great at rock climbing. Right. It's like those blinders. It's intentions versus goals. Right. What is your intention when you're when you're setting out to achieve something? Is it to uh, experience it? and really be present to it, right? Do we hike up to the top of the mountain, try to get there as fast as possible, but ne not stop and smell the roses, not have conversations with people along the way, not enjoy the scenery as we go, or do we just race to the top, right? And we race to the top, we might get there, but we're gonna be all alone. The same person that started at the bottom is at the top, no experience, 
experiences, no no learning along the way. Maybe they got there. Maybe they have, they're super successful in business. Maybe they're super successful in their fitness. Maybe they have a six pack and they're killing it. But the reality of it is, is that they're the same person that they that started when you know that the same person they were when they started. So there was no learning. There was no evolving. And it's so therefore what we're going to do is we're going to slip back into the same habits, the same unhappiness. Um, and, and eventually we're going to end up in the same exact place. So being a perfectionist can be one of the worst things. Most people wear it as a, b- a badge of honor. When you go to him for a job interview, so they, they, they ask you, what's your, what's your weakest thing? What's like, what's your one weakness? And people go, Oh, well, my one weakness is that I'm a perfectionist. And if you were going, coming to me for a job and you said that to me, I would immediately kick you out of my office because right. it means that you can't, you can't get anything done. You are, you are. You are going to procrastinate, procrastinate, procrastinate and uh, and, you know, analyze and never actually succeed. So, um, do you know, that Google, you want to hear something interesting. Google had a poster and let me know. Let me know. I know you guys, you you, you have a therapy appointment, um, <laughs> but <laughs> let me know. Mine's not until four. <laughs> OK, so how much how much time do we have? Do we, are we like good another until... like like uh, maybe 10 minutes? Is that good for you, okay, Kristen? Fine. That's that's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm good for another 20, honestly. Okay. Like, I'm not in a huge rush. Okay, so we don't have to stretch it as long. If I get boring, then you let me know. Um, okay. So, so <laughs> there's, there's a, there was, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, there, was a, there was a billboard that just had an equation on it, right? And uh, it didn't have any other information. And the equation basically um, was, it said, it said what the it said the equation and then it said equals and then it said that that answer dot com. So there was no other instructions on this billboard. So then somebody that some somebody had to go solve that problem and then type in type it into a URL that that the answer to that equation dot com. And then they got there and then there was a website and on that website they there was like another problem. And so they had to solve that problem and that led them somewhere else. And then they solved that problem and that led them somewhere else. And eventually it led them to an application to work at Google. And what Google was looking for was people who were curious, people who, who could not just look at something and not wonder what the answer was. And that is the people that are going to change the world. Those are the people who, who will ultimately be successful in life because no matter what, they are curious about the thing that the thing that is in front of them. They are unbelievably present with the thing that is in front of them that they just become absorbed. And that is that is what you know, whether it's a relationship with your wife or your husband or your your maybe your son or your daughter, be unbelievably curious about the thing that makes them makes them tick. And you are going to have amazing relationships. You are going to be a great father. You're going to be a great leader. You're going to be – you're just going to be so much more present and so much more happy with who you are. So, you know, it, it all points away from being the perfectionist and being, you know, specifically uh, goal-oriented and blinders in life, which it's like – I love Gary V, but like that's the that's like the thing. It's like you got to hustle. It's like – well, sometimes you got to stop and smell the roses. Sometimes you got to stop and be present with who you are and what's going on in your life. You know, and there's all this push right now for people to just be hustling. And well, maybe it's maybe it's actually more important to just pull back and and enjoy your life and and maybe take a little bit of time to figure out what it is that you are passionate about in your life rather than what everybody else is telling you to be passionate about. Does that make sense? It does. And uh, speaking of things that we're passionate about. I want to have you talk a little bit about your podcast because um, you're, you know, you like us are covering a wide variety of topics with all kinds of guests. Um, so I'm thinking maybe you can talk a little bit about a couple of your favorite guests or some, maybe someone who you think our um, our listeners would really would really dig. Yeah. Um, well, I, I like guests who you know you <laughs> you ask a question and then they just kind of talk about about what it is that's on their mind. Um, I've had, I've had really great guests like, you know, um, David Allen on my show. I've had, uh, Dr. Lauren or, uh, um, Lauren, uh, Cordain on my show. Who's like the, basically the guy behind the, the paleo diet. Um, I've had, I mean, geez, I've, I probably interviewed over 150 guests on my show at this point. And the, 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 there's, 
I, I couldn't even tell you specifically which which guest is my favorite because they all actually um, provide something different. But I think the guests that I the guests that I enjoy the most are the ones that don't mind talking about their own personal experiences. There are the people out there who I was just interviewed on a podcast recently and um, and the way I was interviewed was here's a question. Um, what is what is the answer? And then I give the answer and I kind of elaborate a little bit. And then instead of instead of there being a talk, a conversation around it, uh, it's just the next question pops up and then the next question pops up. It's kind of like, you know, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, John Lee Dumas, who it's the same questions over and over again, just a different person answering the same questions. And for me, that's not necessarily that's not a conversation. That's just, you know, going. That's just. You know, this just repeating the same thing over and over again. I never ask the same question. I, 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 I don't think it's it's worthwhile. All I want to do is I want to know what per- makes that person tick. I want to ask the question why about a thousand times until we get to the root of why that person is doing what they do or what drives them. One of the questions I ask is like, what is like what got you into this? Why are you so passionate about this? Because I think that's what really gets us you know, interested in, in, in change, because if we can see why somebody else made a significant change in their life, it inspires us to make changes in our own lives. So in, in terms of specific guests, uh, check out our Rolodex. We have, I mean, geez, we have tons, tons of guests that are on the show that I, that I love. Uh, you guys will be one of them. Uh, oh. you know, and, and that's, and that's the, that's the reality of it. It's like, I actually, I had a really great time talking to you guys. I think that's also the reasons why, you asked me to come on your show because we had such a genuine connection. Uh, and oh, that's yeah. what I, and that's what I looked for. Right. I, I, and I think that's what you guys look for as well. You're looking for a genuine connection. You want to have a real conversation that impacts people. And, and so, but when it comes to the show itself and my wife and I, what we want to do is we want people to realize that we don't have a dogmatic approach about health and wellness. Every single person is different. We're all unique butterflies, right? It's, it's about, it's about finding your own personal path. So whether you're interested in paleo, keto, being a vegetarian, uh, being a pescatarian, uh, whether or not you want to lift really heavy, whether or not you want to lift really light, uh, you want to do marathons, triathlons, whatever it is, there's something for everybody out there. Just be weary of the people that are telling you their way is the only way. And that's something we will never do. That's why I think we do well as coaches because we we assess each individual person, what drives them, what are they passionate about? Because if if you told if 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 you ask me like how do I lose 50 pounds, right? Because we're let's, we're just talking about health. How do I lose 50 pounds? But it's like, well, what do you like to do? And it's like, well, I'll tell you right now, like I like to I like to go for hikes. I like to, you know, maybe I don't know, maybe go swimming once in a while. And if I said, OK, I need you to get on the treadmill three times a week. Oh, that's the one thing I hate. But yeah, but that's the thing that you need to do if you want to lose weight. I'm not setting you up for success because you're going to dread that. You're going to hate it. and You're not going to want to ever do it again. So each individual person needs to find the thing that they love to do and double down on it. Really just, you know, if you love to swim, you better join a place that has a pool or go in the ocean or, or, you know, find a a lake to swim. If that's the thing that you really enjoy to enjoy doing, if you like to lift heavy, great. If you like to take classes, great. If you like to work one on one with a coach, great. But you have to find the thing. You have to be curious. Being curious is a secret to success. Curiosity about your own personal well-being is what's going to really set you up down the line for the thing that you want to achieve. So, you know, our show is basically a journey for people to figure out what is it that I'm, I'm passionate about around being healthy and how do I keep learning more about that? How do I double down on that in order for myself to feel in order for my in order to feel good about myself? And so that's basically our show. And obviously we pepper in the, the, the therapy and the we're kind of crazy and we're, we're, you know, we're a couple who's just kind of having a big transition in our life with our four month old at this point. And, you know, but that's the reality of what the world is right now. And, uh, and I, and I love it. I love every, I love every aspect of it. Uh, it's a struggle, but at the same time, uh, we're open about that on my, sh- on our show. So, um, in a nutshell, our, that's, that is what our show is about. And that nutshell is huge because I wrapped it up in this huge, disgusting ball that doesn't make any <laughs> complete sense. <laughs> no, it makes total sense. Well, speaking about being a dad, what yeah. have you learned about yourself since taking on these new duties as a parent, you and your wife? 
Oh, that's 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 a that's a good question. And actually, I'm really interested in like talking to other dads now. I uh, had zero interest in kids. Uh, honestly, I had four. I had uh, 11 nieces and nephews. I have four older sisters. Um, they all have kids. Uh, I love my nieces and nephews, but I wasn't really curious about other people's kids. And now I'm I don't want to miss anything. And so last year, one of the things, the major focuses that I created was an online uh, coaching program that was all about, you know, it was, it was a, it was a, it was called the sky fit challenge. It was, it was just, it was group training. It was all, all online and it was taking, it took up so much time. It was great. We had great results from a lot of people and we, we had built a, a really strong community, but uh, it was probably, I was probably putting in about 10 to 15 hours a week on top of my one-on-one clients and just everything else that I was doing in my life. And I realized this is not, this is not worth it. I want to, I want to experience what it, when my wife, my, 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 my baby rolls over for the first time, I want to see her smile for real, like a real smile for the first time. I want to experience all of those things and be present for all of that in the beginning and really spend the time with her. And so one of the things that I realized was, wow, I'm wasting my time doing a lot of things that don't matter in my life. So I backed away. So I, I stopped doing the, the, the sky fit challenge. I put it on hold. I pressed the pause button. I told everybody in the community what I was doing. I said, look guys, I want to, this is my, this is my first baby. You know, I want to be there. I want to, my dad, as a kid, my dad worked from five o'clock in the morning, came home after dark, never saw my dad for, you know, Monday through Saturday. My dad was usually working. And, uh, I, I have a good relationship with my dad, but I didn't, I don't feel that connection that I, that I see with other friends who had dads that were really, really present. And my dad's a great guy, but he just grew up in a, in a, he had 11 brothers and sisters. He grew up in a, in a hardworking family that, you know, dropped out of, gra- dropped out of school in junior high, started working. And that was, that was their reality. And so he knows how to work really hard. I know how to work really hard. But I also saw the missing piece in my in my childhood that I didn't get from my dad that I want to give to my daughter. And so I'm backing off of work. I'm taking the time to really see who I am. And I'm diving deeper into the one on one connections with my one on one clients. I'm giving them more attention. Uh, it's, it's I mean, I have more time to do that. And it still leaves me way more time to be with my daughter. But um it's giving me, it's so much more rewarding than training 70 people and, you know, and trying to be present with every single person answering questions all day long. Now I have, you know, my, my major one-on-ones that I really want to focus on and helping those people get to the root of what they really want to do and all of that. Uh, so there's, it's kind of, it's changed my world into feeling way more rewarded in every, in my everyday life rather than, scrambling consistently to kind of, you know, keep all the balls in the air. So that's kind of what having a daughter has helped me with. It's really redefined what I think is important in my life and, and helped me clarify the things that I want to spend my time on. Um, so it's, and, and relationships is basically the thing, you know, with my daughter, with other people, with my friends, I had a dinner party for the first time in almost two years because I had my head so far up my ass for the last two years that I did not have a dinner party. I didn't have I love hosting parties, but I, I was just so busy and wrapped up in everything else that I was doing that I forgot that, you know, and I think that a lot of us do. And so getting back to the root of what brings us joy is is going to be the thing that's really going to have the biggest impact on us. So that's the thing that I love to do. And that's the thing that I love to do with my clients. And that's the thing that I'm going to you know, be instilling in my daughter is really finding the joy in the day-to-day in the process. So I know that you've stepped back from a few things, but if we have anybody listening and they're like, this guy is my guy, like I, yeah. I want more, I want to work with him. Um, do you have opportunities still yeah. for people to, to come in and work with you? And okay, tell us a little bit totally. about that. Totally, yeah. I mean, if people want to work with me one-on-one, that's the only way that I'm working. Um, I want to get to know everybody and, and really be present with them. You know, just the way we're having a conversation right now on Skype, I do video conversations. If people live in Los Angeles, I work with them one-on-one in person, but you know, that's, those are the relationships that I'm trying, that I'm trying to build. I think those are the relationships that are, that I'm the most successful at and the most impactful at. And it's, and it's, it's purely selfish in a way because, uh, because it brings me the most amount of satisfaction. 
watching other people succeed and transform is satisfying. If if it, I, I, it, rather than you know 50 people and you know and everybody loses weight but i didn't really feel the connection and the and the and the, and the, the basically the passion behind all of it for each one each individual it's not as rewarding so for me so if people are interested in working with me one on one um there's a link on my website openskyfitness.com slash coaching if you just go to openskyfitness.com and there's a at the top there there's a there's a coaching tab um right now you know last year was when i or a year and a half ago is when i created this on my website it basically only features me um but my wife and i my my wife is a holistic nutrition counselor she is a uh, gyrotonic instructor here in los angeles she's unbelievably knowledgeable in the in the like the um the mobility world the you know uh, you know just physical awareness um and also obviously nutrition that we work together with most clients and we really do help them you know design i go to her when i have questions she comes to me when when she has questions so we 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 utilize each other we're just like this kind of like this um you know incubator uh area of just helping helping our clients so if you're interested in working with her specifically you can reach out via that coaching page as well um but, uh, you know, and, and or or just email me, Rob at OpenSkyFitness.com. I'm bringing things back down to the basics. Literally, I'm bringing them down to the basics. If you're if if you want to have a conversation, let's have a conversation. Let's make it really personal and, and, and not send you through the kind of the the same the same kind of format that, you know, everybody else is doing. I want to I want to do this on a real personal level. So so that's that's if people are interested in working with me, they can do it in that way. And where can people find you on social media? Everything on social is at Open Sky Fitness. So whether it be Facebook, uh, whether it be Instagram, Twitter, they can find me at, o at Open Sky Fitness. If people like this conversation and they want to be a part of, uh, we have an Open Sky Fitness podcast community. Uh, obviously, I recommend people checking out our podcast because then you can really hear our, my wife and I's dynamic and how we, and also the interviews that we've had on our show. Um, but if you're interested in being a part of the conversation and being a part of a community that's a little bit that's having this same conversation, they can go to Open Sky Fitness uh, podcast group on Facebook. Just request to join. It's a closed group. But for all fans of the show, we let everybody in. It's just it's just a way to kind of further the conversation. So that's that's another that's a way another way people can connect with us. That's well, that's fun. That's great. Yeah. 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 So do you well, guys have I'm one? Of, do you guys have that? Do you guys have a uh, Fit Bottom Girls pod, uh, podcast group on Facebook? No. All right. Well, everybody go out and, and join the <laughs> Fit Bottom Girl podcast group because we just started it. And we're oh, the members. The if you want to be the if you want to be in uh, on the on the ground floor of this, go look it up on Facebook because it's going to be there. Uh, it's going to be great. And Rob's going to moderate it. So, that's right. Um, that's right. That, that's I will be one perfect. of the moderators. Just make me an admin. I'll be one of the moderators. <laughs> Um, and, and, and you guys want to continue the conversation with me or, uh, you know, or Margo or anybody else that's, you know, like everybody will be there. Um, it's going to be a party, uh, make sure to join us there. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> She's the, you're totally Margo. You're totally editing that part out. You're like, Screw this <laughs> no, <guy."> no. <laughs> I got I, I, one less thing for me to do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, I do. So, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, Rob, I know that you are not a fan of the same question being asked in every <laughs> in every interview, but okay. we have one that we ask all of our guests. Unless, Which Margo, do you have anything else that you want to get in there? No, that was that was it. Sweet. Um, so, Rob, what was the last song you listened to before you joined us for this interview? Oh, my God. Um, I think I was I was dancing in the kitchen with my daughter this morning listening to Bruce Springsteen's Glory Days. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. So that was probably the last song I listened to. I have on my Spotify, I have a car. Uh, what is it like singing in your car songs? Yeah. Um, list. And uh, and that was that was, I think, one of the last songs I was listening to. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show today. This was this was a blast. Thank you, guys. This was this was a blast. I had I had such a good time. And um, and, you know, we got to have you guys back on the show on my show as well, because uh, I think you guys are doing some great things. And uh, I hope your audience got a lot out of this. Love this show? Tell us why in a five-star review on iTunes, and we'll read it on the air. Also, make sure you are a subscriber. If you want to reach out to say hi or have a question about a recent episode, yay, well, feel free to email us at podcast at fitbottomgirls.com. And if this podcast jives perfectly with your brand, consider sponsoring the show. 
Get more info by emailing advertising at fitbottomgirls.com. Find all kinds of Fit Bottom goodness online and on social media at Fit Bottom Girls, Fit Bottom Mamas, Fit Bottom Eats, and Fit Bottom Zen. And if books and movies are your thing, check out the other podcast I co-host called Book vs. Movie, which you can find anywhere where you search for podcasts. Thanks for listening. 